So hello guys, today I want to teach you how you can actually make some of these free uh, UIs I've been making lately, how you can make them uh, translate it to dynamic data for your application. Now you'll notice that some of these things are empty, there were some icons here, but because the icons um, I created my project with are not uh, the same as the one I created for this, so they won't appear here unless you actually use your own icons. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to take these cards and make them dynamic. Now, uh, you notice that most of the things with RAD systems is basically the same thing with uh, how they looked in Patriot Classic. Now, uh, one thing I want to teach you is now is this. So if you come to custom view, you do, you maybe you want to do some custom view here. You notice that we have this. Now, let's say you did some custom edits in here and then you realize you don't need to have maybe bread clumps you need them to be set to false uh, you need to join some tables you need to do inline edit is equals to false now if you click back here those changes will not take effect now what do i mean these changes will still remain the same because just like you're opening a file you had already edited now let's turn bread clumps to false so bread clumps are these you notice we set them to false, but they are still available here. You see, uh, show bread crumbs, crumbs is set to false. Now, if you come back here and you need to get rid and refresh the new page, you click on regenerate page. Now, you notice bread crumbs are gone. If you need to return them, you just do this, go back here and regenerate it again. Now, this uh, basically means if you had done any changes here, you have to repeat them. Or maybe you could have maybe backed, backed them up somewhere else and then you copy them back again. Now, uh, this page uh, have created something here. So these are different pages I created. Now, this is the page we have for our system. But now I want to translate this page to look something like this. I want this page now look something like this. Okay, so I'll go to my code, the one I've created. So this is the code I've created. And I'm going to copy all of it. So copy all of it, come back to your app. And if you need to do some changes, you start deleting this card from here. You go all the way down to where you'll find another template closing tag. You'll notice that we have that closing tag there. And now what we need to do is to add this data there. And then we need to publish this app. Okay. So now what do we mean by this? So if we if we come back and maybe hopefully see if our code is generated now you notice that our code has now been generated afresh okay so we need to now make this data dynamic okay so if you look here you notice that i have two products i have a, a shoe another i have shoe one whatever i have all this stuff so we need to get this data and put it in these cards we just uh, added here so how do we do that we go back to our RAD systems and spot where we have some data. So the product name for our case, this is a product name and we need this product name to be the name of our product. So for this case, it's a name. Now, this is how you do it. You do props.row. Now, whatever that is going to follow this is going to be the name of the field we want to use. So for this case, it will be name. Now we need the price. Okay. Come back here and do the same thing. Props dot row dot price this data i'm getting it from here so we are working with the price from here now the discount i haven't really done it but you can leave it like that in case you have your discount field you can actually just add it there but the discount i have here is this and if you come if we come to products here the discount i've just added some two digits here so we can use those to be the percentages but this is not really how you do you do your percent discounts manually, the percentage of your discount, but I'm just showing you how to make it dynamic. You can do your own stuff in there. So we want to come here and do props dot row dot this uh, discount field here. Dot discount. All right, now let's go ahead and publish that application. So generally what we are expecting is to have this data being uh, displayed dynamically in our project here. Awesome. So if you check here, we have shoe one, 
all that stuff. Now here, well, let's go ahead and put an icon here. Now this is just a button that I have set to rounded color. If you notice this, you have this. And here is where you add your icon. But now, the icons I've been using are not the same as this. So I'll have to pick another icon. Maybe I'm using Font Awesome for this case. So I just need to open this and look for cut. Uh, let's go with this one. I don't really like Font Awesome icons. They don't really look nice. And let's add this here. All right, now if we publish this, we can get it uh, looking the same as this, but maybe you can change the color to be something like green. All uh, warning, yeah, let's have warning so that we have a yellow uh, color. So we go back, let's wait for our app to be published. And there we go. If you can see, this don't really look very nice these buttons don't really look very nice but uh i don't mean the buttons but the icons but let's work with what we have all right so that's where, where, where we are now now we want to make the images so let's go back now the images you do them a little bit different so if you come here you notice that we have this so we need to get rid of this now how you add your images is with uh a vue.js you do something like uh v model okay but instead of doing this you do the semicolon the full column so the full column tells this image that you're getting this data dynamically from somewhere maybe in your database maybe it's somewhere in your javascript so but this for this case is our is in our database so what we do is we do this we do utils small u utils dot get image size okay now in here this is where we now uh, run our props.row okay so inside here this is where we now run our plot so if you come here you know that we have this so instead of using these bracelets carry bracelet brackets so we go ahead and say props.row dot now I want to capture this image okay so we say props.row dot image okay then we need to now set the size of that image which will be large all right now so that basically means you're going to be getting our data now let's go back publish our application you can just check your progress here and with that being done we have our images showing up here now you notice that these are not really the same size now Alternatively, if you are dealing with a serious e-commerce, you need to have your images the same size. As you can define some size, all right? But now, uh, for this case, because we don't have that, and we really need to make these images work, so uh, what we are going to do is we are going to do another div here. So let's create a div, okay? Close it, make sure you close it. So we only want to uh, engulf our image, okay? So we don't want to alter the image, but now, you learn by making trials and error. Let me show you what will happen if we do our so our style. So we need to add a style in image, which is going to be height, and maybe we can say it is going to be 200 pixels, right? So let me show you what I mean. So if we come here and um, make our image 200 pixels, it's going to look weird. Okay, so if you notice, this image looks weird, this image looks weird, but they now are the same size, okay? But that is all what we want. So instead of altering the image directly, we now want to alter a div that will be engulfing our image. So you come here and do div, okay? And make sure you close it. So we only want to engulf the image. We don't want to engulf everything. So you just come here and do style is equals to okay so we're going to say style is equals to height and say 200 pixels awesome now let's go back and publish our application and see if you have any difference okay so there we go you notice that now we have this uh, this they look pretty nice but you notice these images is smaller than this but that should not be the problem that should be you can decide to have your image uh, same size images same size all that stuff but now let me 
sorry, now let me introduce you to something else. Now, what we are going to be looking at is something that is really has been bugging me uh, for a few days, but uh, I finally found the solution. So, we might want to do some, I don't like having to do it manually, you can do it with your speed. So, you can say call 12, call SM12, call MD8, all 10, all right. Now, if we come here and we want to do a filter, so let's start a new column and add this column right about here. You can have call SM12, call MD2. Alright, so there we go. So we want to add a filter here. Now the filter is basically going to be... Uh, what do we use for the filter? The price, yeah, let's do a price filter. Uh, for the price filter, we might need to do it on top here. So let's have column D12 and let's have column D12 so that they appear on top of each other. Now we want to do a range. Let's look for a range. Range field here. Drop that range field in there. Now the field name is going to be the price. Okay, so the minimum value can be a hundred shillings and the maximum value can be a hundred thousand let's go all the way up to seven hundred thousand yeah wrapping card i don't want you to be wrapped in card okay so now let's publish this application so if we come uh let's check our progress Good. All right. Well, that is interesting. So the range seems to not work. So I'll pause this and check if this is a bug. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be a bug, but there's this, uh, this is what I was actually planning on showing you, but uh, I'll show you what I mean. We'll try and add it later. So let's go back and try and add another filter in our shop it page. So uh, let's have a drop down maybe. And under this drop down, let's have something like uh, the price and the menu data source. We can just use this is just for demonstration. You can just go to products, have the price price order by id and publish this again so this is what i want to show you so we check our generation progress all right let's go to shop so we have our drop down here if you ever notice this the uh, basically might mean that your server is not running if you come here all right well and good so let's go to categories. Let's try and see if uh, there's some data. Yeah, right. Let's go to shop. All right, so we are back. So the price will be dynamic from the database. Uh, let's see. Uh, not showing. Let's go back. Uh, get rid of the drop down. Do a select. And field name. We might need the product name and maybe have uh, products have uh, the name the name okay good uh what server is down again all right it's back let's go back Right. Something is up with this, but uh, let's just use this. So, try and search for shoe. And let's try and search for something else that is not there. Alright. Uh, this is not really working. 
But generally, what is uh, that it, the, the issue here is whenever you do a custom view, this code is not really working. Now, the only way you can get it to work is to take this code, the entire of this code, and add it in a custom view inside our view page here. So uh, let's try and make this a column D2 and maybe it's a column D uh, 10. Now column Ds go all the way up to uh, 12. So you can divide that so that you have your this appearing on the side here and this appearing on the other side there. Now this is if you want to do this filter stuff. So you come here, you have your data on the left. Great. Now, if you go back and uh, do some changes, maybe you don't want this to be wrapped in CAD, just uh, set this to false. And you need to just come back. And it's going to be a little bit uh, blending with the screen because we have we are going to be removing the CAD. That's awesome. Now we have this uh, looking pretty good. Now, as you can see, we now can see the data. The reason why we're not seeing this data is because it was on top of this and it was appearing behind them. So we do a shoe one. You'll notice that it's not really filtering this. If we try to filter with shoe two, you notice it's not filtering this. Now to fix this, you need to come back here, pick the entire of this code, just Control A and copy it. Okay. Now if we come to page design, you notice we have this page. What you need to do is to say include this page to false. So if you set include it to false, it's not really going to display here. Alright. Now let me just show you. I want to show you with an example so that you don't get lost. Now if we go back, you notice that now we don't have this page. That's because we have hidden it here. All right, now let's come back. And where that page was, we need to drag and drop a custom view here. Now this custom view is where we are going to add the code we just copied. Just paste that code and say publish. So that code is just going to be displayed here on this page because we have generally uh, added it manually. Awesome. Now, if we filter this, you'll notice that, uh, okay, there's an issue, but generally should really work. Uh, let me just check this out. Okay, now this page, you might not really need it again, so you can just come back here, uh, return it back to normal, and we have this custom view. All that stuff all right so uh, let's check this we cannot try and filter with price generate that Our server is down. You just need to wait for it to start. All right. All right. Okay, so now we can confirm that this is actually working. So uh, if you try now to filter with other stuff, maybe filter with categories, then this should actually give you uh, the data you need. Anyway, this was a, a free video for the RAD system course that we are actually working on. So once it's complete, uh, we'll be notified and maybe you can just go ahead from there. So that will be it for this video, guys. See you in the next one.